All right, guys. Um, I'm Shri. I'm going to be talking about uh, D3 today. Uh, you guys saw a lot of really good examples of D3 yesterday with the stackathons. And um, also, uh, Sylvia mentioned another data visual visualization tool uh, with Angular. But uh, I was wondering what all the commotion was about, so I figured I'd take a look and try and figure out, at least give, give those who don't know, at least a very simple 10,000 foot overview about how to create a simple D3 uh, visual visualization. So um, just a quick summary again, D3 is a JavaScript library for manipulating documents based on data. So um, basically any data you have, you can present it on the front end pretty easily. And as you'll see from the examples, um, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So uh, the basic concept is that it leverages uh, HTML5 and CSS3. So specifically in HTML5, there's a SVG element, uh, scalable vector graphics. And in that element, you can put various different shapes and lines. Um, the difference between that and the canvas is that those elements, or those, those shapes, are actually a part of the DOM. And so with D3, you can, you can manipulate those elements. Um, a little bit of history, it was created in 2011 by uh, three guys at Stanford. It was called Protovis. Um, and it's actively maintained uh, at uh, Mike Bostock's GitHub. Um, and just a side note, Mike works at the New York Times now. So like all the stuff you see on New York Times did, did on, online, like all the animations and stuff, it's probably him and his team that, that, are, that are doing that stuff. So let's dive into a simple, uh, simple example. So on the front end, this is HTML code. Uh, let me show you what it looks like. Here, so let's just put it side by side. So this is a simple circle um, that uh, okay. So here um, we've got a pretty bare bones HTML file, just one div with an ID, um, and in the JavaScript we have uh, the D3 function called select. So it selects. Uh, with CSS selector style, um, the ID called example one, and then uh, the method append appends an SVG element onto it. Um, and then you give it specific attributes for, for the size for the SVG. So here, this is, a, this is actually implemented. You can see the, the element and, and with the specific attributes that, that it has. And then continuing on, continuing on we have uh, we're, we append a simple circle uh, with various styles, attributes, um, with the radius, the center of the circle, x, y. And then we also added uh, a couple of events uh, bound to the mouse over and mouse out. So here you can see uh, really quickly that this is, you know, it, it's pretty straightforward. It's easy to read, um, and you can do uh, a, lot of, a lot of different stuff. But this doesn't include any data. This is very simple stuff. So now you might be. Uh, thinking, okay, well, what can we do with this now? So the second example I have is, uh, so similar circle, but now um, we've added at the bottom here, you can see uh, this transition function. So the transition uh, usually works along with this delay and duration. So the transition actually takes you from one state, uh, whatever you, you've selected, into another state for that, for that item. So like, for this circle, you're going from a radius of 40 uh, to a radius of 10, uh, and then we're moving it, uh, the x position, from 50 to 30 on that SVG, and, and we're changing the fill style to black using this duration and this delay. So here you can see when I refresh, this circle, the delay is pretty large actually, but I just want to show you the example. It shrinks, it moves over a little bit, and it turns black. Um, so now I want to take a step back, and you're probably thinking, OK, I can probably do a lot of this with jQuery, right? Why do I need D3? So one, you know, the, the main reason why D3 is so popular is it easily binds your data uh, to, to these elements. And then you can dynamically add and, and manipulate these attributes and styles according to functions. You can put in functions and that iterate over the data um, and make, make 
make the elements do um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, and it's very easy to add data sets. So they have methods for like CSV, JSON, basically any, anything you can get in an array, you can, you can pass it to D3. Uh, so the, the next example I have is actually includes uh, uh, some random data in the script. So uh, I populate a five element array with some random uh, values uh, up to 100, or actually up to, yeah, so up to 100. And then um, this is another circles example. So here, what, what I want to focus on is this select all, the data function, and this enter function. So here we have, we build our SVG element, and then uh, we're selecting all the circles in the SVG, but the circles don't exist yet. So this is a little confusing part about D3 is that even if you don't have it and you're going to be putting the, appending them in later, this enter function, it, it sort of creates a placeholder for those elements that are, be, that are, that are coming into the DOM later. Um, so, and this data iterates over the data set. So this, all of this that happens happens five times for each, each element of the data set. Uh, um, and this particular example, we're actually uh, placing these circles at random points on the x-axis. Uh, and I'll just go to the example so you can see. Um, so there's five circles randomly placed. And basically, the transition is moving them down uh, and, and making them smaller and turning them yellow, right? Uh, so that's, that's, um, that's one example. So the final example I have is actually now creating a bar chart, which is you know, probably what you want to do with data or like you know, how you want to represent actual data. So again, I have a data set. Uh, this is just random values again. But um, here. Let me actually play this animation. So we're building up the bar chart from, from the bottom to the top. So it actually, you know, the animation looks, uh, looks cool. So you can do this like on mouse over or on click or something like that. But basically, we're building on all those building blocks that I just showed you. So um, again, we, we build the SVG element. And then within, within that SVG, we're selecting, instead of circles now, they're going to be rectangles. Uh, and then appending those rect rectangles. And because the rectangles, they take an XY property and a height and a width. And the XY is actually the top left. So you have to kind of manipulate the data a little bit and have it start uh, sort of flipped. So here, this X is just spacing, spacing the data out uh, based on the width of this SVG. Um, the Y uh, initialized to 200. And then the height is actually uh, based on the data. So these functions actually take, uh, you can use two parameters, the data itself and then the index of that data. So you can use both of them to manipulate what you want it to return. Um, so here we have uh, the transition, which is uh, building those uh, bar, those, those rectangles, uh, specifically the Y coordinate, um, which uh, is based on the data, and this is, the data is actually scaled by four, uh, just to show visually like uh, it's it's actually scaling. So, um, so just kind of wrapping up. D three has been around for four years; it's pretty mature now, and there's actually a ton of examples and tutorials online. Again, you saw some examples yesterday. There's a whole geo component to it, you know, where um, there's a whole geo library. You can uh, you can place data on maps and. And, and uh, the, here are a couple of ex uh, tutorials that I went through. Uh, I highly recommend them. Uh, documentation is very, very clear. It's very easy to follow. Um, and there's also numerous libraries now that, that try and uh, extract a lot of, of, the, of the complexity of D3, because th these are very, very basic. Um, a lot of the examples you've seen, I'm, I'm sure, um, especially like the node example that, that Lewis had. Um, you know, so. Uh, there's a lot of libraries that extract that, and you can just uh, pass in data and maybe give it a few other parameters. I've seen like one called rickshaw, and one called dc.js. Um, so that's yeah, that's D3.